every time I buy a piece of tech that I know I'm going to keep, I try and make sure I buy the very best. But what if you only had a total budget of $3,000? $3,000 to replace not just my phone, my laptop, my speaker, but everything I own. Well, there's only one site where I think it's going to be possible. Hello, wish.com. I might as well start with my phone. There's the good stuff. 5G++. You always rely on wish.com to break the frontiers of technology. I've got to replace my speaker. Oh, good lord. <laughs> What's this? 12,000 watt power. Oh, it's actually gonna be so difficult. I've got to replace my MacBook too. You gotta to be kidding me. Do we get some screen with that bezel? Oh wait, this looks good. $81. Core i5 CPU, eight gigs of RAM, 512 gigs SSD. Something's off here. It comes with a one terabyte memory card as well. Let's we'll see what happens. An Apple Watch. Why does this look so real? I also have to swap out all of my gaming stuff. I think Wish.com has made their own version of the Nintendo Wii. They call it the Y2 Fit. And then the actual console is just this tiny little stick that plugs into your computer. I have like a million questions. That's kind of cool though. Wish it even has a mini PS1, except it's way cheaper and also apparently has 600 games. So it's designed like a Sony console. It's got the colors of a Nintendo console and it's playing a game from a PC. Well, consider me curious. The site has like an unlimited number of earphones. Are these meant to be AirPods? I mean, is it just me or does that massive bulb not look like it's going to fit comfortably in your ear? Six dollars for an electric toothbrush with four interchangeable brush heads. I've actually got a really, really high-end toothbrush that I normally use, so that will be a fun comparison. Ah, uh, I've just realized. We also have to swap out our camera. So this is actually really scary because I know for sure that what I'm looking at right now is not an 8K camera. And I actually have to be so careful to make sure that I don't get stuck with like a 240p webcam as our main camera. I think this is our best bet. $474, says it's 4K video. I've got to replace my favorite trash can too. Okay, this seems very reasonably priced. Surely a bin is like the one piece of tech where you actually don't want a bright light shining onto your stuff. How do you make an automatic, rechargeable, self-cleaning robot for $23. Right, now it's time to replace my gym gear. RIP my future workouts. Ah, okay. A treadmill with no handles. Does that make it just a tread? So this is just a knockoff of Powerballs. The difference in price is shocking. What are you doing? It's like a workout tool that's meant to correct your posture. Oh, cool. A bath mat that tells you it's a bath mat. <laughs> Apparently it's super absorbent and quick drying. It says on the label, no smelly. How could I forget? Massage guns. And it's definitely the kind of product where there's got to be a massive markup. Like the really high-end Theragun that I got from a video a while ago, that was like $600. Now this looks like the exact same thing. Let's compare it. No. So the water bottle I use every single day is an air bottle, which has these different scented pods that you can swap in and swap out to make you think that you're drinking flavored water. So you can get a wish.com version of the air bottle and the scents. Oh, my ember mug, which I use literally every single day has got to go to. It comes in a gift box. I mean, from my experience, most products from the site come in a bag, so that feels like a must have. Technically, I mean, I've got to swap out my desk too. Okay. This looks pretty bad, but if we are going for the authentic wish.com experience, I think this is the way to go. I also have to get a full-size PC replacement. Does Wish.com not sell PCs? Okay, this is a PC case. Well, in that case, I think we're gonna have to build our own PC using only Wish.com parts. This is just basically an oversized Xbox Series X. Oh, this would be such a cool idea. Let's try and make a Wish.com version of the Xbox Series X and compare it in performance to the real one. So we've got to get a graphics card, motherboard, CPU, the SSD for storage. Oh, this does not seem right. There's no way this is a 512 gig. M2 SSD for $31.78. <laughs> Who skill RAM? Let's water cool the whole thing, why not? What do we do about our chair? <laughs> Children's swing, hammock, toy set, hanging chair. This is where I decide how much I want to commit myself to this wish.com thing. I know it says it can support 200 kg. Do I trust it? And I guess just now a controller to wrap the whole thing up. The only thing left, if I am actually to replace everything I own, it's gonna have to be clothing too. Hey, I mean, on the bright side, this looks a lot better than their tech. Yeah, I just, I don't think this is gonna fit me. Japanese fashion men long pants. Those look a bit low. What is a wish.com suit gonna look like? That's actually really highly rated. There was a point in my life where I probably would have thought this was a good fashion choice. I was three. Oh, this is sick. I mean, I'm probably not enough of a fan of Cheetos to pull this off, but I love how in your face the printing is here. It just covers the entire hoodie. Shrek! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this hat is kind of how I feel right now. That's very interesting looking. I like it. Shoes with wings. I actually really want that. <laughs>
Right, we've either just struck ourselves a massive bargain, or I've ruined my life for a week. Did I want this much stuff? Let's get unboxing. Starting with the things that are least essential to my life, and moving on to the things that are most essential. Let's start with the cleaning gadgets. Have they actually made a sweeping robot for like $10? It's gonna put a lot of people out of business Ooh. if they have. Let's start with the trash can. It's a little smaller than I was expecting. I guess it's a good thing. It's gonna force me to throw less stuff away. Uh, I don't see any LEDs in here. No, I look at it, I mean, the price kind of makes sense. It's mostly just a plastic container. Because they don't package each part of the product individually, there's scuffs everywhere. What on earth are you? I'm so confused. Like, no part of this product looks like it's a joke. What? More and more, I'm starting to think this is actually legit. Let's fast forward a week and find out. This is what I'm using to clean your fur. Don't care. If any of you guys own or know a cat, is it normal for there to be a layer of fur over your floor every single morning? So, I'm about to have a celebration for my engagement and look at the floor. Paper, we've got plastics, we've got a rubber band. So, we will be using, not this, this. Oh wow, the lightness of this machine does not fill me with confidence. So I imagine, just click the on button. No way. It's real? Just stick something directly in front of it. <laughs> oh, processing. <laughs> yeah, can't do it. It's actually not very consistent picking stuff up at all. <sighs> you had such promise, dear child. Don't think I can give you more than a five, though. Just about to throw some stuff away, and I have to say, I really like this. I find that the motion detection is a little unreliable, so I tend to just use the open close button. To be honest, it actually opens with so much vigor, it tends to smack your fingers on the way up. So I almost approach it like a wild animal. So in that sense, it is less good than the simple human bin that I used to use, which opens very reliably, very gracefully, closes on its own. But to be fair, considering that this thing is like 5% of the cost, it does do like 90% of the job. It's not hard to be a good trash can. It has also dawned on me, probably should have gone a couple of sizes up because there's a massive benefit to it being hand height like this because you just glide over. Yes, you do have to do a fair bit of bending. And we've got the watch. I don't use smartwatches on a day to day basis. So for me, this is highly non essential. But wait, we didn't buy a real Apple watch, did we? I'm sure this was less than like $100. No part of this packaging looks anything but the real thing. I mean, it feels on the light side for what I would expect the real Apple Watch Ultra to weigh. I haven't actually tested it myself though. Oh, cool, you get two boxes inside. So you get one that says Ultra, which is the watch itself, and then one that says 49 millimeters. It's actually kind of freaky. Like normally between real and fake products, I can tell straight away. I mean, the bands are a bit of a giveaway. You can kind of see the seams of the molds they were printed from, which Apple is very good at avoiding. But still, I mean, it's not like you can tell from a distance. Here's the giveaway, look at this. The resolution of this picture right here, Apple would never. No way. It's sealed in the exact same way that Apple seals its products. It's gonna feel the same. The thing itself is actually quite weighty and dense and premium. Designed by watch in China. Okay, I'm just getting into bed at the end of day one with this watch. And so far, I'm kind of blown away. For the price it was, the hardware feels so realistic that, I mean, to the untrained eye, this is an Apple Watch Ultra. But the other half of the equation is the software. So tonight, actually, I'm going to track my sleep both with the in-mattress tracker that I normally use, which is very accurate, and this, and then just see how well this lines up to that. So, shockingly, it's actually got the amount of deep sleep basically spot on. But it does seem to be a little bit confused about what counts as deep sleep versus light sleep. It's just run out of battery, so you clip it onto here with this loose magnetic connection. <laughs> but to be fair, this has been running for three full days non-stop. I'm actually uh, at my engagement party. I'm starting to think this does not go with the outfit. I've got a thing. <laughs> can't be this. All right, well, maybe it's not actually like a billion watts in power. Oh, look here, it actually says, technical specifications, power output, five watts times two. Let's start with the earphones though. Um, these actually don't look exactly like knockoff AirPods, like I was expecting them to. The top of the case almost has a lip that goes down. It feels a little bit rattly in a way that expensive earphones don't. And also, if you open it with a tiny bit too much force, well, the earphones themselves are kind of like AirPods from the front, but with flat sides, which actually makes them more comfortable to hold. Okay, the speaker. As much as I am disappointed that it's much, much smaller than it was advertised to be, it's at least like a, a weighty package. 
Oh, it really is a rugby ball. Wow. I'm heading down for a session on the treadmill with these bad boys. It genuinely feels like it's completely empty. Man, there's so many things that high-end earphones do well that you just take for granted. It's so difficult just because of the shape of these to actually get them out with one hand. And they're really, really like stiff. They don't slide out. I've just realized they do actually have touch controls. So you can touch the stem to play and pause your music, which is cool for earphones of this price. But it's done in a way that's kind of painful. It kind of feels like when you cover your ear with your earlobe and then tap it. Not great. And also, only one of them works. This is not a good product. So, my sister's prepared a playlist for our official engagement party. Might as well use that to take this for a spin. I really wish they just stuck in those voices that tell you what mode it's on. As opposed to having to listen to these random beeps and guess. Oh, this makes no sense at all. Oh, there we go. Hmm. Just says pairing unsuccessful. This is rough. Two hours later. Ah, oh, we're in. It doesn't hit as hard in the lower end. Honestly, for the purposes of the vast majority of people, this is everything you need. The bass doesn't hit the hardest, but I was actually surprised with how much you can hear in the music using something of this quality. And the music was pretty good too. It's actually very well timed because I was kind of looking for a bit of a wardrobe change up. I like going for clothes that are really subtle in terms of branding, like not like massive logos plastered across them. I don't think this is gonna quite fit the bill. I mean, you can't complain about the vibrancy of the print. Look at this. Have they printed the exact same thing on both sides? The fabric is extremely thin. I can easily see through both layers to the other side. Can't argue with that print. What is going to happen when you put that in the wash though? I think this was about $40. I'm not blown away, to be honest. Well, I guess the most important thing is, does it look good? A little tight around the arms. It's all right, you know, I'd probably wear this on video where people can't see the fabric in person. <laughs> These are our incredibly low trousers. That's not how trousers should look. That's where my feet go. So they call this tech wear. I guess because it has loads of pockets and is very versatile to store things in. But I'll tell you one thing you can't do with this. Run. <laughs> Don't look at me, I'm disgusting. If I try to move one leg any further than about this, I will split it down the middle. Hey, stop. <laughs> All right, well, uh, let's continue. Oh, it's a sport-like material. It feels decent quality. But you know what? That's what I expected when I ordered this. So, well done. What is this? Oh, it's the hat. A novelty hat for kids. That is what I feel like right now. I feel like my mum has told me what to wear. Is this meant to complete the look? <laughs> Why is there a spinning blade on the head? Self-defense. Are these, um have been clearly mistreated in the post. Whoa. The wings are separate. Look at that. No way. The shoes are modular. Oh, you replace this part with these. Did they come with instructions? Wait. This is a clearly used pair of scissors. Oh, there's so much space to get your feet in. I will say though, not the most comfortable. They've not really indulged in padding in any part of the shoe. So all of these various different parts of the shoe are detachable, which is cool. But it's just a bit strange that when you attach them, they don't look like they belong there. You see, you know when really famous people go to those fashion events and the interviewers are always asking them, who are you wearing? As in like, what brand are you wearing? Well, for the first time in your life, you are seeing wish.com. Oh dear. This is so bad. I'm literally, all I'm trying to do is sit cross-legged while using these pants, but they don't actually have enough room to be able to do that. Yeah, game time. This is exciting. I thought it said Street Fighter. Yeah, it actually says Game Times Fighters. And then at a glance, this looks like the PlayStation Classic, but it actually says Game Station Classic. Classic Game Station. But it's two players, which is interesting. It looks very much like the mini PlayStation 1 that got re-released recently, but just... A little bit lower grade. Nothing opens on this. There's no moving parts. It's all just kind of a shell for show. And the controls are so ridiculously light. Wait. Comes with an apple brick. <laughs> I would love to see the inside of Wish Factory. So they're just like, hey, we need a power brick over here. I've got one. The switch. One of the features here just says, wow. HD. <laughs> That's got to be good. Okay. I mean, they have quite well reconstructed the body of a PlayStation Vita, but it's just worse in every way. Oh, 
long long day of work. There's nothing quite like winding down with the ginger ale and a fake PlayStation 1. I find this very strange because it's clearly made recently, but it has none of the perks of being modern. <laughs> like it connects to the TV via composite cables. Why did anyone do that in 2023? Whoa, that was instant. So the game itself seems legit. Is he called Hardman? He is called Hardman. Oh. Oh, I miss my Switch. You really have to like reset your expectations of what a game is to be able to enjoy something like this. I'm very much someone who's spoiled by the modern era. And I'm dead. You do get used to it after a bit. One thing I really do like about retro games is the difficulty. They were not afraid to punish you. Like it's actually kind of cool to be on an opening level of a game and not be told immediately how I need to get up here. It's just leaving me to figure out the tools that I have at my disposal. Sometimes I feel like modern games just hold your hand too much. That's it. How do I actually go? <laughs> I actually think we have a problem. We don't have any shoulder buttons. The original PlayStation 1 did have shoulder buttons. I genuinely think there might be a control that we can't use because we don't have the button for it. So we are actually stuck on level one. Okay, so if you really wanted a retro game experience, this is not the one. We just had a really productive morning and decided that now's the time for a 10 minute gaming break. So for the last month, I've actually been playing quite a bit on a 2DS. I've been going back and playing some childhood favorite Pokemon games, but no more because it's time for MP5. Whoa. Promising start screen. Oh, moly, this is bad UI. I mean, the software literally looks like it was designed by a 10 year old. Buttons absolutely suck. It requires so much force to push. There's actually very little wrong with the games themselves. They are based on some sort of retro console. Um, let me know if you know, because I don't quite recognize it. But once you get lost in it, you do forget about all the peripheral things, like the controls, like the audio, which sounds kind of tinny. Still no Pokemon. Okay, I've uh, changed my mind a little bit on this guy, mainly because if you go into this game folder and then you click local disk, look at this. This is like almost every retro console that I could possibly want to play. And you click each one, so many games. I used to play this one, Advance Wars, so much when I was a kid. So the fact that I have that, I have that game sequel, and then like 800 more games all stored locally on this machine, not bad. But it's not the full Wish.com experience until you use the chair. Pray for the structural integrity of my ceiling. <laughs> oh my god. I feel like every fibre being stretched right now. This is a really fun chair. It's kind of like when you first discover an office chair, except you have 360 degrees of movement and it moves a lot. <laughs> you know what? Worth the struggle. It's a lot more comfortable than it looks. I'm getting to the stage now where this is the stuff I'm going to use every single day. Let's start with our crucifix. I do wonder sometimes, who is the target audience for something like this? I mean, do I count? Listen to that. This is the fake Powerball, which I'm actually very, very excited to see. Because if this can do what the other company's charging you like $100 for, for like 20, then kind of a big deal. It says powerballs.com. <laughs> Wait, the real one is called Powerball, right? Let me just check. Come to think of it, it's probably better if you don't start Googling to find out. So this is, wait, it says description of contents, casual bikini. Oh, it's our bath mat. Why didn't it just say so? Also kind of actually not a very big bath mat. It really does just say bathroom. <laughs> I own mouse pads that are bigger than this. The fascial gun. I think this one has a very, very good chance of being like very nearly as good as the real thing. So compared to the Theragun, it loses like a thousand points when it comes to presentation. I mean, they literally shipped it in like a, a sandwich bag. But what really matters is, does it give you a good massage? I actually think I was a little too fast to judge this one. Because while it doesn't just instantly take in and absorb all water in five minutes, what it does do is take in a lot of the water that would otherwise end up just on the floor. Because normally I would like shower and then I would just walk out into this floor and for the next hour or so, the entire floor will just be wet. Whereas this way it redirects a lot of that moisture into that mat, which stops the whole floor looking like a swamp. Oh, also, um, I forgot to unbox it earlier, but this is our tread. So what I normally use when I'm working here is a vibrating plate. And it's actually really cool. It makes you tense your core constantly while you're working. Out with the old and in with the new. So I'm working on this for about an hour while trying to do some work. And honestly, I think this is a really good idea. I'm having no problem at all concentrating on my work. This isn't detracting from that, but I very much feel like I'm still being active at the same time. There's definitely a couple of things that in practice I wish were better. Like, listen to this, if I get off, it's actually basically silent. It's just, as soon as you put some weight on it, it becomes really quite loud for something that's not really a lot of action. Other thing is this safety tag. So you put one side of it onto your clothing and it's designed so that if you fall, 
fall off, or if you just come off the machine, it'll pull it, disconnect it, and therefore stop the machine. But it's just really easy to accidentally do that and then it stops. So then you just end up not using the safety tag. And then the other thing to bear in mind is, do you have that much depth in your room to be able to have something that protrudes about a meter further from your desk? I am actually curious though, how fast could it hypothetically go? Okay, so it caps at six, I assume, kilometers an hour, I hope. Well, this is not comfortable at all. Okay, now it's a little harder to concentrate. Although, imagine how many calories you burn after a day of this. Ooh. Hey, I've psyched myself up. I'm ready for a workout. Hey, not bad at all. That's the key thing is how much resistance can I generate with it? I've got a real one of these upstairs that I probably use once every other week. And this feels just as difficult to do. It's just a little bit racklier. It's very weird to put on. Oh, it does actually feel like it's doing a lot of good to my posture. You can't not keep your back straight while using this. The only problem is, again, this rattle. Probably give it a seven. Also, while I'm down here, I want to try out what this fake air up scent smells like. It's not packaged in the most appealing way. Oh, but it smells amazing. It smells like a fruit, but more like the uh, candy version of it. Whereas the real ones tend to stick a little more closely to real flavors. Oh, screw that. This is actually so much better. But do ask yourself why they can't even apply like a sticker correctly at wish.com. The only thing left for me now is a massage. This is the good thing. So this is what we have to use, and this is the one that I normally use. This one is heavier by far. It's got a matte finish. This is just kind of cheap plastic feeling. So just to give you an idea of the kind of power that the real one can massage you with, it's it's insane. Looking at it now, I'm really craving it. But no. <laughs> Onlywish.com. Hey, okay. Sounds like a lot of power. Here we go. Ooh, that's good. Right there. I mean, it's still definitely got the capacity to provide relief, but you can definitely tell that the arm that's doing the punching has much less room to move here. So it feels a little bit less like there's a real masseuse there who's like properly kneading and giving it some real welly and a bit more like there's just a point that's sitting on you that's vibrating. For the price though, probably a seven. I don't think I've ever in my life been as sore as I am right now. I've just basically finished a workout where I've been holding press-ups at their lowest point, staying there for as long as I possibly can. So I thought I'd give this another spin using a new head. Oh, craggy. Another thing I've just realized about this is with the real Theragun, the movement is isolated to the head. Whereas with this, every part of the body of the gun is moving. Oh, oh. it is definitely somewhat helping. There's one thing I can't say about it, it's that it holds back. Does it work for a face massage? Ow! No, it does not. Right, okay. This is our PC case. I'm actually extremely, extremely curious how this compares to an actual Xbox Series X, because I mean, I definitely spent more on this than that would cost. But at the same time, how good your PC is, is basically a question of how bad is your weakest link. And we'd have to rely on a lot of things to go our way if we wanted to make sure that we have no weakest link. It's noticeably bigger than a Series X. It comes with its own power supply. That's extremely generous. This is our two terabyte SSD. Presented like a like a toy you get for free in a McDonald's Happy Meal. And I think we only paid like $20, $30 for this. But some part of me was just holding out hope that they would actually send a legit Samsung SSD. And then there is our graphics card. It does say Radeon RX 550 over here. So what I'm hoping is that it's just a spin-off of an AMD card. Okay, let's see what it looks like. This will be telling. Ooh, yikes. I mean, it just looks highly unconvincing and bright pink, but I guess can't really talk about fashion choices today. This is actually tiny. And don't forget, like most of this bit here is just heatsink. So the actual graphics card is this tiny little sheet here. So do I think this is going to out graphic the Xbox Series X? As of right now, I do not, but I would love to be proven wrong. So this is the normal Xbox Series X that we used to game. This is the Wish.com PC, and it literally does look like a bigger version of it. 
almost one-to-one. -one. It literally even has the same type of Xbox glow around its power ring. Now, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say there have been some problems setting this up. The graphics card was not talking properly to the motherboard, and the SSD continues to lie about what it actually is. Although it seems like now that it's all set up and working, it is actually a one terabyte NVMe SSD, which even though not what was on the listing, would be very good value for money, if it is true. It's quite a tidy looking box, all things considered. So just to set up Call of Duty, because we're about to see how our PC stacks up in graphics versus Joseph's real Xbox Series X. Ooh. How does it feel for you? That's very smooth. How's yours? Cinematic. Mm. So I've got to say the frame rate is low enough here that it's a problem. Even though we're not playing at an ultra competitive level, this is bad enough that it's a problem. I'd say in terms of the graphic quality, if we put aside the frame rate from it, it's probably pretty similar. If I just get one kill, I'll be happy. Oh, and it might be this one. It wasn't that one. It feels like my character is just coming back from a really big night. <laughs> He's not coming back. <laughs> Dark. It's kind of sad though, because our machine has definitely cost at least twice as much as the real Xbox. It's actually insane to believe that this is the games console. We are in business. Yes, we are. It's not like any Wii I've seen before. <laughs> so you've got Player One. It's a very light feeling version of the Wii controller. Fruit Ninja. Well, this is definitely not actual fruit. Oh, it does do something. Wait, okay, so if you don't, if you don't slice, Okay, nothing gets sliced. Let's see if it actually detects where I'm pointing. Oh, that was wrong. So, okay, if I slice here, no, it's still cutting everything. So I can actually... Yeah, I think it, yeah, it just registers that you're moving, not where you're moving. Yeah. It's on a uh, little cheap that I It's still eight months per later. No. So all you do in this game is A. So even if I, like, turned around this way and carried on slicing, yeah? You do. I'm good at this. The fruit didn't know what is it didn't know what you do. <laughs> Some part of me is a little bit impressed that this is all running off a USB stick. It's just, if you can avoid it, it's not the ideal form back for a console. Let's do the toothbrush and the mug. What is this? I think they've just given me two of the same warming coasters, which on their own are only worth like one dollar each. Literally use my Ember mug every single day, and I was quite excited to find a budget alternative to that. Okay. From some angles, you can actually see through it. There's a heating element and there's a button. There is a slight question in my mind of, do I want one of my Wish.com gadgets getting hot enough that it could burn me? Do they like sit on these packages as like a, a, a send off before, <laughs> before shipping them? So the presentation is a little bit less premium than the listing led me to believe, but $6. And to be fair, it does come with the four interchangeable tips that I was told. It doesn't feel bad. I will say the quality of the button and the indicator light behind each icon are giveaways of what this really is worth. I've been sleepy all morning, so I've cooked up Aaron's special homemade chai. Okay, so what I would normally do is put that straight into the Ember mug. And what I really, really love about this is that the battery's internal. So I could just take this mug wherever I want with my drink and know that for the next hour and a half, it's just going to be at my perfect temperature. But there is no battery here. What it looks like this is, is a pressure sensitive pad so that when you put a cup that has enough water inside of it onto it, the blue light comes on here and stays on. Because there's nothing in this mug right now, it's actually not turning on at all. Uh, I think the button is stuck. Yeah, so that actually has just broken. So what this actually means is I'm going to be having normal temperature teas for the next week. I mean, that's got to be like a zero out of 10. It's the first night and it's goodbye to Oral B. Hello to whatever you are. Okay, I mean, right off the bat, the brush head and the bristles look distinctly less pro. You can see really clearly, especially next to something like this, how much less defined the bristles are. Oh. Not a nice snap into place. Oh no. In a really weird kind of way, this reminds me exactly of the massage gun. Like it's vibrating like it's meant to, which just doesn't feel like it's doing that with any kind of purpose. On the plus side, it does feel like it's giving a better clean than most non-electric toothbrushes. I would call this a tolerable five. So I'm towards the end of the week now, and I'm actually really excited to switch back to my normal brush. There's actually a massive difference in how clean you feel. Like, can you hear how it's like squeaking around my teeth? <laughs> Right, this is the most important one so far. I mean, if I think about the size of the packaging that my actual cameras that I use came in, there is a big difference here. So you've got a bunch of different attachments for your lens. 
charge of your batteries, a remote. Oh, you've got an onboard microphone built in. That's that's kind of cool of them. Again, completely unbranded, but it's definitely better than using like onboard camera audio. This is all very generous. The big dogs do not ship anything with their camera bodies, basically. So this is what you will be using to film for the rest of this video. Oh, so now it actually does have a brand. It says DVC, which stands for Digital Video <laughs> Camera. This does not feel like 400 pounds or dollars worth of uh, camera. So it does say on screen that it's recording at 4K, 30 frames per second, but it does feel a bit laggy. Let's try it. Let's swap out our real Sony a7S III for what was it DVC? It was just DVC. It's <laughs> <laughs> not bad. Color profile is interesting. I think I'm too yeah. short. I look very sick. I wonder how the audio sounds. Whoa! Hey, what? Okay. what did I just do? Oh, they're infrared. This is my vision. Can we see if my glasses are out? This is an example of where we cannot see anything at all. Whoa! Now I kind of wish my normal camera had this. We look freaky. <laughs> but again, it's a torch. It's not even like a dim one at that. Apparently, in the US, you can just buy right. one big. Do you look like you're really. I can smell it from here. <laughs> yeah, look. <laughs> So this is our laptop section. Where is the laptop? What? In the listing, in brackets, at the very end of everything, it says SD card. You can't do that. Let me grab my actual laptop. So it has not detected a card. So what we ordered was a laptop. What we got was a zero megabyte micro SD card. I guess it's still worth opening this laptop table. And I guess the benefit of this is that it can allow you to technically work even if you're lying on your bed. It feels a little bit on the rattly shuffly side for my liking. If there's one thing you need in a desk, it's, well, not this. <laughs> So I've just spent the morning scripting in bed. It actually feels great. I could very quickly get used to this life. I decided not to replace my laptop with an SD card, as um, exciting as that would have been. But this is all possible thanks to our stand. So while I wasn't initially reassured, it's quite a solid mechanism. So each of these hinges, you press it in, and when it clicks, you can rotate, and then you let go, and it locks. And you hear that right, it's a pretty firm lock. I would actually go as far as to say that this is a great tool. This is like a nine out of 10, because it's not just lifting the laptop above my legs, it's bringing the screen towards my eyes, and it's also angling the keyboard in a way that this is actually really, really comfortable to type on. I will not be using the drink holder, though, because that scares me. <laughs> but now it is time to make the one swap that I've been dreading the most. I will say, actually, packaging is not bad at all. It's kind of just like Apple's, but it's just more in the box. Micro USB cable, that's not good. Oh my goodness, then you get a case and a screen protector and the SIM ejector tool. Wow. Stuff like this makes the bigger companies look bad because it shows how cheap it actually is to just throw that stuff in. I pushed it out bottom first and that bezel is, um, disheartening. I can already tell this is going to be such a difficult transition. Let me be real with you for a second. Trying to live with a Wish.com phone is not like a bad experience like you might expect. Bad is okay, you can tolerate bad. This is dysfunctional. Okay, listen to this. You put your SIM card in, no signal. You try and charge the thing, doesn't go over 35%. Never in my life have I ever seen that before. But then the worst thing is I couldn't figure out why this thing was not letting me install apps from the Play Store. I kept trying and trying and trying and all I got was unfortunately, Google Play services has stopped. And that's because this is an unauthorized device that lies about its specifications. And so Google can't identify. So honestly, I can say without a hint of hesitation, that this is the worst product I've ever tested in my life. <sighs> After an entire week of downgrading every single thing I own, one thing that does make me feel slightly better is that my internet browser has just been upgraded. This is Opera One. It's the brand new, completely redesigned version of the Opera browser, and it's basically engineered for fluidity. Like your tabs, they're no longer an incoherent mess. They group themselves into clean tab islands so you can focus on one thing at once. And it just moves and adapts around you so fluidly. Like whenever I need to free up some space in my window but don't want to close any tabs, I just click on the color handle and the tab island collapses. And plus, Opera's worked with the OpenAI company to release their own brand new AI called Aria, which has the power of ChatGPT, but is completely optimized to be able to take advantage of that power 
in the context of browsing. So you can just highlight a word, for example, and ask it to explain it. And I really like the fact that it's clearly made with speed of use in mind. Like, you know, a lot of the time when you're chatting to AI, you sometimes realize you need to rephrase the initial question you asked it to get a better result. In other AI chats, what you normally have to do is to go back to your past question, highlight it, copy it, and then repaste it back into the box to edit it. But with Aria, you just tap arrow up on your keyboard and the question will be right there. So hit the link below to check out Opera now.